you're thinking about moving to the Reno area, here are 10 reasons why you shouldn't. Hey everyone, this is David Tully, and on this channel, I give you local real estate market insights, and I show you what it's like to live and play in the area. And in this video, we're gonna be going over the top 10 reasons on why you shouldn't move to Reno, Nevada. And if you enjoy this type of content, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you're thinking about moving or relocating to the Reno area, and you need some help, just reach out. The first reason on the list are home prices. And this one really hurts because this is what I do for a living. The median home value in Reno is right around $550. $50,000. Just to give you an idea, the median home value across the US is right around $430,000. So we're about 25% or a little bit more higher than average cities throughout the US. So this is higher and this does make Reno more expensive. There are some other attributing factors like low inventory and of course high interest rates, which are keeping prices higher. And we're seeing more multiple offers in this current market, unfortunately. We're also sitting at very, very low inventory right around one and a half months. If you're looking for a home in Reno, Nevada, right around 400,000 or under, you're gonna be very, very limited. If you're looking for homes above $500,000, you're gonna have significantly more options. And there are a good amount of new homes throughout Reno and Sparks and Verdi that offer homes in the range of about 430 to about $600,000. But like I said, if you're looking for a resale home, you're looking at about 1.5 months of inventory. A normal healthy market has about five to six months of inventory. So we are very very shy of that. The second reason not to move to the Reno area, we currently have a homeless population in Reno, Nevada, and it is sad, but it is nothing like other big cities. If you were to compare it to San Francisco, Portland, Las Vegas, or even Los Angeles, we don't even compare. We currently have around 1,600 homeless people as of 2022, and that number actually went down by 100 from 2021, which is right around 1,700. If you want to get a better idea or put it into perspective, Portland currently has around 5,200 to 5,300 homeless people. When I went to Portland two or three years back, we stayed at a pretty nice hotel in downtown Portland. And I remember there being two to three to four tents right across the street from our hotel. I didn't really feel that comfortable and I definitely didn't let my wife go out at night by herself because there was that homeless population. This certainly is a population in downtown Reno, but I would say you don't see it that much unless you go to specific parts of downtown Reno or the fourth street area. So if you wanna avoid the homeless population or the homeless people, I would try to avoid certain parts of downtown Reno and 4th Street. You see some homeless people in South Reno and other parts, but typically in South Reno, Northwest Reno, or maybe even several parts of Sparks, you don't see that many. So comparing it to other big cities, our homeless population is not that bad. It is unfortunate and I hate to see homeless people and I wish we could help them all, but it is something every city and every area needs to work on. The third reason is if you have a problem with gambling, you probably want to avoid the area because although this isn't Las Vegas, this is still Nevada, and we have a handful of casinos throughout the area. And funny enough, I thought it was pretty hilarious when I moved here from Hawaii, that they actually have slot machines at gas stations, grocery stores, and airports. And you'd be surprised, but a lot of people actually gamble in those areas. So like I said, if you have a problem with gambling, Reno, Nevada might not be a good city for you. Although I do like to gamble, I typically only gamble maybe once or twice a year, and I throw about $40 down to play blackjack when some friends are visiting, but that's typically it. If you don't like the snow and the cold winter weather, you might want to avoid the area. Well, although over the last few years, we've had pretty mild winters, this winter specifically was the second snowiest winter in about 70 years, which has been pretty crazy. But even throughout this winter, most of the time when it snows, whether it's throughout the day or the evening, you typically just want to avoid driving in the later parts of the evening or the night, and definitely the early parts of the morning, which can be very, very icy and very slick at times. But the great thing about this Reno area is that most times that it snows, I would say by about 11 or 12 the next day, the roads are gonna be completely clear and you'll have no issues driving on the road. And the funny thing is, even if it snowed for a full day, even by that next afternoon, it might not even look like it snowed throughout most areas, which is really, really funny. And like I said, even though we had the second snowiest winter in about 70 years, two to three years previous to 
this, we had very mild winters. And although I enjoy it very much, we don't get blizzards or single digit winters that often. I would say most winters, our average temperatures are around 35 to 45 degrees during the day. And like I said, if we do get a blizzard, you might see single digits for a few days, but that is because we have a cold front or a storm coming in. Funny enough, Nevada is actually the driest state in the US, but fortunately Reno is not as dry as Las Vegas. I lived in Vegas for a couple years and it is very hot and it is very dry. And although Reno is still very dry, I actually prefer it now living here almost 11 years. I'm originally from Hawaii, so I used to be comfortable in the humid weather. And funny enough, when I lived in Hawaii, I never used lotion or chapstick once in my life. But now living in Reno, Nevada, being very dry, there's not a single day that goes by where I don't use lotion, moisturizer, and chapstick. Because if you don't, your skin will crack and your lips will hate you. And there's some other downsides to living in a dry area because coming from a humid climate, I didn't really have many allergies. But once I came to the desert, I certainly had more allergies flare up. And once I talked to the doctor, he said, hey, if you want to deal with your allergies, go back to a tropical climate or near the ocean. And I laughed and I said, that's where I originally came from. And that's probably why I had issues. But now being in Reno for almost 11 years, I don't really have any more issues with the dry climate or my allergies. Reno is a higher elevation, right around 4,500. And certain parts of Northwest Reno and Somerset are actually around 48 to 4,900. And me being originally from Hawaii and sea level, when I first moved here when I was 14 for a year and I played high school football, the first weekend we tried doing sprints, I couldn't breathe at all. And I was shocked because I had recently been playing football and running, wasn't in the best shape, but I was really shocked that I couldn't breathe at all. I actually stopped playing and I ended up going to see a doctor and he said it's because you came from sea level. After two to three weeks, you'll probably get used to it, but I decided and opted out of playing football at the time, probably because I wanted to be a little lazy, but who knows. But I just want you to keep in mind if you're visiting the area for sports or deciding to move to the area and you're coming from sea level or a much lower elevation, you might have a little trouble if you're doing some outdoor activities like running, biking, or any type of other aerobic exercise. So keep that in mind if you're coming from a lower elevation. So the public education system in Reno, Nevada, or Nevada as a whole, is not that great. We currently rank at about 48 to 49, and we've been consistently around 49 to 50, which is really, really bad. But I don't want you to think that all schools throughout the area are bad. We still have a handful of very good elementary schools, like Roy Gom Elementary, Collin Ranch Elementary, Westergaard, we have Billinghurst Middle School, DePauly Middle School, high schools like Damani Ranch High School, and McQueen. So like I said, although overall as Nevada as a whole, we don't rank very highly or almost last, we do have a handful of good elementary, middle school, and high schools throughout the area. One of the other downsides to the Reno, Nevada area is that we do have higher rent prices. The median rent price in the Reno, Nevada area is right around $2,300. This is more common for a single family home. If you're looking for a newer, brand new luxury apartment, which you're not gonna have a problem finding because they're popping up almost everywhere, which is kind of crazy. But you can find a brand new luxury apartment kind of in the $1,500 to $1,800 range, ranging from about a studio to a one bedroom. If you're looking for an apartment right around $800 to $1,200 a month, they're definitely out there, but very limited. And the apartment or the condo you're living in is gonna be significantly older. What I would highly recommend you do is find a three to four bedroom home and find two to four roommates and split the rent. This allows you to get a much bigger home, a beautiful backyard, and maybe even live in a neighborhood that you want to live in. And this is much more manageable and affordable. Reno, Nevada is not that big. And I'm sure you've heard the slogan, the biggest little city in the world. But we only have a population of around 500,000 people. But that includes Reno and Sparks. Sparks is another city in the same county of Washoe. If you think about other cities like San Francisco, Las Vegas, or Los Angeles, they have much bigger populations. And if you're wondering if they have great things like clubs, Michelin star restaurants, and a ton of amenities through the downtown area, we definitely don't have a ton of things to do in the downtown Reno area. While I think there are a good amount of amenities, it does not compare to bigger cities like Las Vegas or New York. But what we lack in amenities throughout the downtown Reno area, we make up for in outdoor activities. We have Lake Tahoe, which is absolutely gorgeous. Sand Harbor is one of my favorite places to go in the summer. You can go paddle boarding, jet skiing, or just have a few drinks and lay down on the beach. You can visit Donner Lake, Pyramid Lake, or you can go to an awesome outdoor 
walked or hiked. This is one of the best parts of living in the Reno area. We also have a ton of ski resorts nearby, so it's very convenient. Actually, from my house, Mount Rose is only about 20 to 25 minutes away, so it is super convenient and easy to get to. If you wanna drive a little bit further, you can go check out North Star Ski Resort, Squaw, or even Heavenly. And if you wanna drive even further, you can visit my wife's favorite ski resort, Kirkwood. So like I said, although downtown Reno or Reno in general lacks a lot of amenities some of these bigger cities have, we make up for an amazing outdoor activities. Last but not least is the heat in Reno. And you're probably wondering what the summers are like. You might be thinking that they're comparable to Las Vegas, but I actually lived in Las Vegas for two years and the summers in Reno are much more enjoyable. And I'm not gonna say we don't get hot, but I would say our typical temperatures are in the high 80s and 90s. We certainly can get into the triple digits and the 100 degree weather, but I would say we top out at about 103 to 104 degrees, but still triple digits or 100 degree weather is not that common. But one of the best parts about Reno is that if we even get to 90, 95, or even 103 or four degrees, we cool down to about 50 to 60 degrees at night, which is very comfortable. I remember living in Las Vegas and the temperatures getting up to about 117, 118 degrees at time, and what felt like 90 degrees at night, which is awful. One of my favorite things to do is after the gym or after exercising in the evening is driving with the windows down. And I remember when I did that in Las Vegas, it's like getting hit by a heat wave at night, which is awful. But in Reno, at any part of the year, and especially the summer, in the later part of the evening, you can roll your windows down and the temperatures cool down significantly. So I would say the summers in Reno are pretty awesome. But like I said, don't let people fool you. We can get hot at times, but a great thing to do in the summer is go to the pool or visit Lake Tahoe. Overall, I think Reno, Nevada is an amazing place to live and I absolutely love it here. This video wasn't made to bash the Reno area, but just to inform you if you're thinking about moving to the area. And if you enjoy this type of content, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you're thinking about moving or relocating to the Reno, Nevada area and you need some help, just reach out. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.